I told the story when I was in NXT for that week and I was coaching and I would give a, then, um, you know, Oh God, Robbie, Robbie Brookside and Norman were probably two of the highlights of being, especially Robbie Brookside mm-hmm. being a legend in the business and being the most disarming. Those are the real, the real legends and stars and the people that don't have anything to prove are always the nicest people and don't give the attitude or try to like mark their spot in their territory. They don't give a right. fuck because they know they're great. Norman is Norman has nothing to worry about because Norman's something you don't see within the business. Those two guys are confident, humble, and willing to help out. You don't see that in wrestling all, all the time, those three things. But the Otis match, the, before he was even Otis, they had an opening match on an NXT live event where I was agenting the match, which meant I had a microphone with an earpiece going to the ref as I'm watching, and they wanted me to feed them all the moves or tell them to slow down, tell them to speed up, all these different things. When we talked about it earlier that day, we kind of framed out the match. And I said, hey, guys, have you ever just went out there as a first match to see what would happen? You have you have your spots in the finish. Have you ever done it without anybody really in your ear? And they said, no. I said, well, tonight you're gonna we're going to see if you can succeed or fail. Just get over its first match. They haven't seen anything. So as long as you don't massively screw it up, mm-hmm. you'll be fine in and out in five, six minutes. I go, I will cue the referee if you're on a hold a little too long or you got to you gotta slow it down, but I'm not going to call the spots to you. It's up to you guys to do what you need to do. They had a, they had a what I would say is a very, very good match for some of you who had maybe a handful of matches between both of them. They were excited when they came back. They had fun and they felt like they were able to progress. Like, wow, we just learned so much. I could hear the crowd. I could do this. I could do all these things when it was just three people in a, in a crowd, but not paying attention to anybody outside the three right. people. I got heat for doing it because that's not the way it's done. Oh, well. Big deal. I got heat, but those guys learned something and became better workers. That's pretty much what I said. I said, well, how are they going to learn? That's not what we do here. And I, I probably blacklisted myself for doing it that way. And but there's that, there's a microcosm of the problem. That's yeah. not what we do here. Let's repeat that model as we kill our own business and make wrestling as bad of a product as it's ever been. But heat's on you for trying to teach them how to be better workers and, and that kind of shit. That is the that is the split line in the sand of we are going to go down this highway of ignorance and self uh, gratification to to stay the masters to have these workers who will never generate a dollar for us because they never learn how to connect how to become masters of their craft even as a 10, 15 year pro if you come up through the organization and all you know is what a ref is calling to you because somebody in the back is fi- trying to put something together. You know, like then, then you're never gonna ever get this to the to the top level that you got into it for, but you're making your money, so you go along to get along, and then you're doing thank you apologies after you get fired. Well, that is well, the most get that from me. thing. <laughs> well, here's here's we're half a step away from the Ingorella position holding this controller with a CGI version of the wrestler. Because why bother paying human beings when they're literally marionette puppets or so or a video game character that you control via an earpiece am i wrong 